By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a battle between a deck called Through the Ages. It's white, it's blue, it's got a little bit of black, it's got Sage of Latinam, it's super cool. I'm playing with it against my buddy Frank. He's playing with a deck called Power of the Mind, a mono blue mind trick deck. Again, super excited to play against this deck. It looks really, really sweet. Um, before I start with the deck text, I would just like to point out that you can also skip that. I know that some of you in, uh, like to go straight to the action. You can do that very simply by checking the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of them reads MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the MTG action. And here I'm going to start with the deck text, starting with the deck that I'm playing today through the ages. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck that I am playing with today. So um, this deck is called Through the Ages and um, it's got three colors as you can see, white, blue and black. And I already see tons and tons of synergy, right? So maybe just talk about some of the obvious synergies that we see here. So Sage of Latinam I think can play a huge role in this deck. One blue and one to cast, tap it, sacrifice an artifact and you get to draw a card, right? Well, this works great with a card like uh, Triskelion, but also a card like Tetravis. Maybe just zoom into Tetravis first. Six to cast for a 1-1 one, one flyer with three plus one plus one counters. Then in your upkeep, you can take those plus one plus one counters off to take little, make little 1-1 one, one Tetravites, little 1-1 one, one flyers. So what I could do in theory is I can play my Tetravis. Then next turn, I can turn it into four 1-1 one, one flyers. I can sacrifice the Tetravis, so keep your tokens alive draw a card for it, then use my animate debt, because there are also two animate debts in this deck, to get my Tetravite back on the board, right? So that's just a lot of value. And when it comes back in the board, guess what? The counters are back on it, so I can make even more flyers. So you can make a whole flying army. Now, animate debt is a great way to do this, because it's one black and one, right? And it's, it's, it's very efficient. But what you can also do is, you can use an Argivian Archaeologist. And guess what? That's also in this deck. So Argivian Archaeologist, one of my favorite creatures, two white and one to cast for, unfortunately just a 1-1. One, one. I wish it would have been a 1-2 like the Sage of Latinam. Two white and tap, and you can bring back any artifact from your graveyard. So this works great with that Sage of Latinam sack mechanism. One of the things I love about Sage as well is you can do it in response. So for example, your opponent plays a disenchant on one of your artifacts. In response, you can use the Sage, you can sack it, and you get to draw a card. Even better, if your opponent plays, let's say, a plow, on um, on your Triskelion, you know, oh, my trike is gonna be removed from the game. No way, you're gonna use your Sage, sack your trike, you get to draw a card out of it, and then you can take it back later with your Archaeologist or your anime debt. So this deck is just full of possibilities. There are some like small little tricks that he's put in here, um, which I kind of like, but they can also be kind of clumsy. For example, he's playing with a one-off of Martyrs of Corliss. Martyrs of Corliss, is a veteran bodyguard, but then for artifact damage. So all damage dealt to you by artifacts is soaked up by the Martyrs of Corliss. It's a great card when you're playing with, let's say, a Copper Tablet, for example, but we don't see that in this deck. Or when you're playing with uh, Mana Volts. Now, Frank is did put a Mana Volt in this deck, but it's only a one-off. So it's quite interesting. Like I would have expected when you play with Martyrs that you go more all in on the Martyrs of Corliss but in a way, I like it as well. He's kind of put this in as a silver bullet. It, it works really well with the Ball of Suleiman, which is also in this deck, right? So the bottle works in a way you cast it, then you can sacrifice it, and you flip a coin. And you got to say hats or tails while the coin's in the air. I think an opponent has to. When the opponent's right, you get five damage and the bottle's gone. When the opponent is not right, you get a 5-5 five, five flying gin, right? So that's awesome. But when you get the five damage, let's say you get the five damage and the Martyrs of Corliss is on the board, the Martyr will soak up the damage. It's got six toughness, I believe, so it still lives. Then the bottle goes to the graveyard, and hey, guess what? If you've got your, your archeologist on the board, you can just get it back to your hand, flip again. I mean, maybe you'll be more successful next time. Who knows? So I really like these syn synergies, and I'm really looking forward to do the crazy stuff. And what I think, and you can already hear me say that, I, I'm looking forward to do the crazy stuff, and to enable you to be able to do that crazy stuff, He's put a lot of powerful cards in his deck and staples. So we see all the blue power in this deck, right? I mean, this is insane. We see um, the Time Twister. We see um, Ancestral Recall. We see um, 
the uh, the time walk. So all the blue power is in here. It's just it's so powerful this deck. Then he's also playing with some of the strongest control staples are probably the strongest in old school, a full play set of counter spells, which I find an interesting choice because he's only playing with three disenchants and two swords to plows here. So that can kind of show uh, the play style of Frank. He's expecting with this mana base of this deck that he'll be able to have two blue open a lot of times so he can just cast that power spell. So only two swords. He also could have made the choice, and I think many other player players would have, to go with three counter spells and just one sword, or, and three swords instead of two swords. But I like I like the choice of Frank because a counter spell you can counter anything and everything. A swords it only takes care of care of creatures and it also gives life to your opponent. So it's not always the best thing to have in hand. But a counter spell it's all, always almost always useful. You gotta have two blue open of course, and you kind of gotta be ahead of the board. When you're behind, it's not great. Anyway, this is the deck that I'm playing with today. It's Frank's build. Thank you, Frank. I'm looking forward to test this baby out. Now we're going to look at the deck of my opponent, Power of the Mind. And now we're looking at the deck that my opponent is playing with today, Frank. So he's playing with Power of the Mind. And I mean, you just got to love this. Um, this is very, very flavorful, I think at least. He's playing with four Timmies, which of course is the ruler of mind games, right? For people that don't know, Timmy is another word for Protocol Sorcerer. So he's playing with the full playset of Protocol Sorcerers. And then he's playing with four Psionic Blasts and four Psychic Purges and three clones and a physical double ganger. So <laughs> this, this is just really cool. And of course with Control Magics, I think this is what every blue player kind of like dreams of. What you want to do is you want to steal their creature, you want to clone their creature. And if you can do that, then at least I maybe counter their creature or bounce the creature back to their hand and then steal it again or counter it, whatever. And on top of that, he's playing with a lot of direct damage, at least for blue, right? For blue, it's a lot of direct damage. Four Psionic Blasts, right? One blue and two to cast for an instant. Absolutely such a good card. Four damage to any target and two damage to yourself, right? So really kind of the mind trick, the Jedi mind trick. And this card is just so powerful. And then he's playing with a card that I really like. I actually got a place that myself as well, Psychic Purge. So Psychic Purge is a little bit more a card that's more off the radar, I guess. So what it does is a sorcery for one blue. I wish it was an instant. It's a sorcery for one blue. And it just deals one damage to any target. So it basically does what a Timmy does, right? Um, it's got a really, really cool extra ability though. When a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard the purge, that player loses five life. So this is like ideal when you play against those discard decks. So when you play against Hypnotic Specters and you have to discard this or a disrupting scepter because then you get to choose which is really hilarious but the the best way to use this card is when you get mind twisted so people that follow the channel know that i'm not a huge fan of mind twist because it can just really really wreck stop a game right there um but when you're playing psychic perch you're kind of you know you're playing it the ball back to your opponent you're you're beating him with his own stick saying okay you want to discard my hand and you want to wreck this game Go ahead, I don't mind, go ahead. And you, then you show those psychic purges. That that must be such a sweet feeling. Now remember, uh, before we play these games, it's not like I've seen a deck photo before, right? So I don't know that Frank is playing with four psychic purges. So if I draw into my mind twist, I'm probably just gonna cast it. Cause hey, it's a really good card and I do understand why people play with it. So I'm just gonna cast it and I'm gonna try to discard his hand. And when he's got those psychic purges, oh man, if he's gonna kill me with these, I'm actually gonna be happy. I'm actually gonna be happy. But even if it doesn't get discarded, if we look at the deck, what the deck wants to do, he is playing with four other teammates. So maybe being able to deal one damage to a creature and then having maybe two two Timmies on the board already means that you can kill a creature uh, with uh, toughness three, right? So that's pretty powerful. Talking about the combinations with the Prodigal Sorcerer, one of the things that Frank is doing in this deck as well, he's playing with four deserts and it's, Desert is such a cool card, right? It's from the Arabian Nights. It can give colorless mana, but you can also tap it to deal one damage to an attacking creature. Now, an important part of information here is that you can deal that damage after the creature has dealt its damage, right? So that's that's always kind of like this sour aftertaste that Desert has. I wish it wouldn't have that clause, but it has that clause, we gotta live with it, right? So it can deal a damage to a creature. So let's say he's attacking with a 2-2, 
um, I'm going to take two damage. I'm going to use my desert, dealing one damage with the desert, and then I'm going to use my Timmy to finish the job, right? So desert and prodigal sorcerer, they work together really well. Now, the nice thing is, um, I'm a little bit jealous of Frank's card collection. Did I mention that already in this video? Frank, if you're listening, I'm still jealous at your card collection because look at this. He's got another set of power, blue power. <laughs> it's, and he's using it in this deck. No problem. So I'm playing with Ancestral Recall. He's playing with Ancestral Recall. I'm playing with Time Walk. He's playing with Time Walk. I'm playing with Time Twister. He's playing with Time Twister. So that's all good. It's all fair and square. I actually kind of like that for this matchup that we both have access to these huge blue powerhouses. And of course, there's a Black Lotus in each deck as well. So it's, it's kind of insane. I like the simplicity of this deck. I do think that my deck, in all fairness, is much, much stronger. So I'm really looking forward to kind of see this power of the mind in action and see what Frank can do with it. I do see, you know, he does have a lot of weapons against creatures. He's got three Maze of Ips main as well. Um, so he can what he can basically do with this deck is keep my creatures at bay and ping me to death and use his direct damage to finish it off. That's, that's a scenario I can definitely see happening. But overall, if I just compare both of the decks, I would say that my deck through the ages looks more powerful. But I've been wrong before. I'm wrong all the time. So we just have to go to the match and, and see. So let's start with game one. Let's go. Game number one, and we're off to the races. I'm sitting on the left with the Timmy playmat. So I'm playing uh, white, blue, and black versus Frank's mono blue deck. I do believe I see a Psychic Purge in hand there for Frank. Ooh, great start for me with that Mox Sapphire. That means I've got Counter Magic up and running, not countering the Soul Ring, so maybe I don't have a Counter Spell in hand. Remember, my deck has a full play set of Counter Spells. There's a Sage of Latin and the one, two creature from the Antiquities expansion. You can tap it, sack an artifact and draw a card. Looks like Frank is a little bit in the tank here, making the decision to steal it with the control magic. I do have a few Disenchant's main board, I believe two of them, if I recall correctly. Just playing a land passing turn here. Probably gonna take a damage from the Sage, yep. Going to 19, what else is he gonna do? Just passing turn. And I'm passing turns well, not finding a land. That's bad news for me. I'm playing with quite a lot of six and higher casting cost uh, spells in my deck. So I really need those lands. There's a clone on the Sage. That's pretty funny. So he wants to attack me here with old men. There is a Black Lotus, a Swords on the clone. That is interesting. Is he going to sack his Black Lotus here to counter? Oh, he's got two blue open. Okay, he doesn't even have to. Okay, counter spell on the swords. I wonder what's in my hand. I'm just kind of wasting swords like that. On the other hand, I traded the swords for a counter spell, which is actually pretty decent. Getting two damage here, going down to 16. Found that strip mine. Don't want to use it, though. I'm really looking for a land number six, probably. And there is a Disenchant, so he wants to go into combat. In response, I want to cast a Disenchant over the Sage. Does he have another counter spell? Oh, that's pretty sweet. A Boomerang. And he's also tapping the Sage. Doesn't he then need to sacrifice something if he wants to tap it, though? How does this work? Because now I Disenchanted the Control, but it fizzled. Oh, he sacked his soul ring. He sacked his soul ring to draw a card. Okay, that makes sense. Now he attacks. I have to take the damage. And oh, look at that. Sack in the Black Lotus. <laughs> playing the counter spell again. But I'm playing a control magic. Okay, this is some goofy magic right here. I like it. Like Frank's going all in on the Sages of Latin. And we've got a real battle on our hands here. Me trying to destroy his clone Sage. And he's trying to keep stealing mine. Luckily, now I had a uh, control ma or sorry, a counter spell to counter the control magic. Now I'm playing a recall, and uh, we're actually discussing what to do and how things went. It just it went pretty quickly, and uh, it looks like I'm going to take two cards back here. Ooh, discarding. This is interesting. Do I have animate dead in hand? Then perhaps discarding trike and tetravis. 
Then again, if I have enemy dead, I don't have a black source. Maybe I have a Sage of Latinum that I want to protect with two blue open to possibly save it from a counter spell or a control magic. I could do that play actually. I've got enough planes and islands to do so. Frank looking at his hand, he's got three cards in hand so far. I've got three in hand as well. What to do here? Looks like he's passing. We're discussing a couple of things. Of course he knows that I want to do something with those cards in the bin. He probably knows I have an archaeologist, but he also knows I've got a counter spell to protect it. Of course my problem is that my plan is so easily to see through. On the other hand, Frank only has three cards in hand, right? So, I mean, I should be able to successfully cast it and protect it. Look at that, not doing anything. I don't have an archaeologist in hand? That would be a big surprise. Maybe I don't. Maybe I just wanted to keep this open to kind of control the game. Interesting. Playing a mana vault. Not going to do much, but of course, I, yeah, I'm sacking it here. Interesting that you always find the mana vault after you decide it. Oh, now we see anime dead. Oh, here we go. Underground sea, anime dead. Tetravis on the board with three plus one plus one counters. There is... The Cyblast, of course I'm going to counterspell, but Frank knows this. Does that mean that he maybe has a control magic? Playing the book, Jam Day Tome. It looks like he doesn't. So now I can split it up, which is very important. I got to keep it safe. Three little Tetravites and a 1-1 one, one Tetravis. Remember, I can use the Sage to sack the main Tetravis and maybe then get it back again. I really need that Archaeologist. That would be ideal right now. Get the Archaeologist out. Oh, there's the Mind Twist. Oh, look at that. Two Psychic Purges. <laughs> this is so sweet. I know I'm being the victim here, but this is so sweet. Oh, oh, I, oh actually, he chose to draw a card here. Oh, this is interesting. Use the book to draw a card. And okay, no, he, he, did, he did change it. Okay, okay, okay. That was kind of unclear what happened there, but I believe he changed his mind and he was like, no, you got to take the 10 damage, right? So I'm on 10 right now, or I'm on 5, sorry, you get 10 damage. I love the Psychic Purchase, Frank, really. Really, really, really. You get the Timmy Price for this matchup, definitely. I love it. Control Magic, oh, and again, going for the Sage of Latinam. Oh, that's so funny. I think he's playing around right now. Okay, I'm putting it back on the Tetravis because I want to make sure that he can't ping it. Counterspell on the enemy dead. I wanted, of course, to get the Triskelion and kill both of the Sages. Instead, here, attacking. Wow, wow, what a, what a goofy game this is. But I'm on five, you know. If you can get some Timmies on board, you can start pinging. Problem, of course, is that big flyer. There is a Psyblast. Ooh, he could have Psyblasted me directly, but I think this is a better decision because he couldn't, couldn't have killed me with it, but wow. He's on 15, I'm on 5. I mean, I'm not going to swing with the factory. I need it on blocking duty. I'm, I'm definitely too low. Wow. What am I doing here? Looking at my cards. Am I going to cast the... Oh, there's an Argivian Archaeologist. If this card can stick, I can start getting back those huge creatures in the bin. Remember, I've got a trike and I've got a Tetravis in the bin here. Uh, it looks like I'm, it's not out of the game, is it? I'm just looking at it. Okay, okay, that's good. Got worried there a little bit. I mean, what Frank really needs... Okay, Maze is good. He just needs a Timmy, right? If he can get a Timmy, he can ping down my Archaeologist. And of course, I'm looking at my graveyard right now. Now the thing is, I can get back to Triskelion, but I cannot play at the same turn. I don't have enough lands, so maybe I'm getting back the Mana Vault instead. On the other hand, you never know how long the Archaeologist is going to survive, so probably my best pick here is Order Triskelion, because I can use the Trike to kill one of the Sages of, uh, of Frank, or to get back the Tetravis, because it's the same as 411 Flyer, so very strong options. For me here and Frank of course still has that jam day to him. He can draw into more cards. Got that maze. So things are actually looking pretty good for him as well. 
What he really needs to do is just kill that archaeologist. If he can kill it, he's... Oh! There's the workshop. That means an early Triskelion on the board. No response from Frank here. He's drawing a card with the tome to try to find perhaps a counterspell. Looks like he hasn't found it. Drawing another card. So, I mean, he should be kind of going into card advantage. Although, I've got... Of course not, because I've got that archaeologist... It's just a huge pain here for Frank. He's got to get rid of that archaeologist. Two cards in hand. Looks like he doesn't have anything. One psychic perch would be enough to get rid of that problem. What am I going to do? Probably going to use the archaeologist to get back the Tetravis. Okay, tapping. Disenchant. Trying to, trying to get my sage back. And again, the boomerang. Oh, this is so interesting. Now he can boomerang and he can actually try to... I'm sorry, now he can control magic, I mean, and actually try to get back the Triskelion. I can still use the um, archaeologist here, get the Tetravis and play it out as well because of that Mishra's workshop. That is pretty cool. Look at those creatures. And actually, I'm not... Of course, he's got the maze, because I thought, why am I not attacking with the trike? Remember, my sage still has summoning sickness. So Frank should be able to do something against it now. But his window is closing. He was kind of ahead. Now he definitely isn't anymore, but he's still got one control magic in hand. Perhaps he should just get the Tetravis. Yeah, this is what that is what he's doing. I think that's a very good move. Also, remember, his clone is a Sage of Latinam. Is he putting it away? No, right? Okay, I already thought what's happening. Oh, because I could I could sacrifice it, but I'm choosing not to. Do I have a disenchant in hand? I mean I can choose to sack it. Why am I not sacking it? Why am I not sacking it to the Sage of Latinam? This is so weird. Wow, that's a bad move on my part. Okay, I think I just forgot. And then Frank said, why don't you just sack it? And probably said, no, no, I, I made the mistake. That's probably what happened. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. This is like a casual kitchen game. So I'm fine to, to when an opponent asks to take something back. But I personally try not to take my moves back because I kind of want to learn from them. So if I forget to use the Sage, then that's my mistake. And I think that's exactly what happened here in this situation and Frank kind of offered to to let me still do that play but I didn't want to there's a psychic perch going down to four <laughs> going down to three no I'm, is he gonna kill me are you gonna kill me here Frank oh I love this time twister we're shuffling up <laughs> oh what a match am I forgetting those cards at the top by the way the jam they told him and there's something else I don't know, but let's just... Yeah, I think I'm forgetting those. Okay, oh, there are other cards. They're, they're from another deck, probably. Anyway, we're shuffling up and getting a fresh seven. I, I, I just... I'm so dead, right? I, I Hopefully, I can draw into a counterspell because remember, Frank is playing with four Psychic Purges and four Psionic Blasts. He's on nine. I'm on three, right? But if maybe if Frank has a handful of duds, which does happen from time to time, I mean, he is pretty low now. I can start smashing face. Oh, okay, that's it. Psyche, psionic Blast. Do I have a counterspell? I hope. No, no counterspell. Wow, well done, Frank. You got this one. And what I loved so much about this game, and yes, here we see that card. Psychic Purge was the MVP of this matchup. Remember, I went from 15. Let's have a look back at that play. I went from 15 to 5. You know, Psychic Purge. I love it. Thank you, Frank, for putting it in this deck. And the good news is, this was just the first game. We've got a second game to come. So uh, let's go and check that out. Let's go to game number two. Game number two is about to start. And uh, let's see, what does my hand look like? Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Diamond Valley, so I do have a land in hand, but it doesn't produce mana, so definitely need to take a mulligan here. Gonna get a fresh seven and have to put one on the bottom. 
these were really, really fun uh, games to play against Frank, by the way. When I look back at it, I'm starting to remember that. It was a really good afternoon. We played tons and tons of games. Really nice, sweet kitchen table magic with different power levels, trying out different stuff, uh, different things. Having a drink it was a good afternoon. And let's see what I'm going to do here. Looking at my hand. Did I put one on the bottom yet? I think I did. Yeah, I'm doing it now. Okay, I'm doing it now. It looks like I'm having a tough time. <laughs> it's, oh man. At least I'm, I get to keep this one. Playing a Soul Ring turn one, that's a really good start. Basic Island into Soul Ring. Let's see if Frank can have an opening like that as well. Just a Basic Island passing turn. Good news for me at least. Library of Alexandria, that's pretty powerful, but I'm pretty low on cards. Okay, deciding to go off the library plan. Copying my Soul Ring. There is a Chaos Orb. And paying six here, playing my Triskelion. So I've got some pressure. Ooh, Maze of If. That is too bad. I mean, it's so funny with Magic. If you could just turn, you know, look one turn ahead, you would make completely different choices. Like, I really chose to get off the, the library plan just to cast that aggressive trike early and trying to get some damage in. But it's really backfired on me. There is an Orb Flip. So probably Frank is, think, is thinking that I've got like maybe another Tetravis or, or a Triskelion in, uh, in hand. That's why he's flipping on the Soul Ring, which is understandable here. Going to four cards, could of course choose, okay, playing it out. I, I wanted to say I can choose to try to go back on the library plan. At this point, I'm probably hoping for an Ancestral Recall or maybe a Time Twister or a Brain Ge a Geyser later in the game to kind of fill up my hand and get the library active again. But look at Frank, he's not playing on anything. I feel kind of lucky because I'm stuck, but he's also stuck. And the difference is I've got that library on board. So I don't really mind if we're both stuck. I can slowly draw to seven, start getting extra cards. He's going through his hand. He wants to do some, do see a boomerang there. Is he gonna play the boomerang? And if so, on what? I mean, not on a copy in Triskelion, right? That would be kind of, uh, Suicidal. The, oh no, the trike I can understand because I can't play it out again. Oh, okay, he's playing it on the Library of Alexandria. Going back to my hand, so I've got five now. He's doing that in my end step, of course. Passing turn. Frank is really giving me lots and lots of time, which is great for me, of course. Remember, I started with one card less, but it doesn't really seem to matter now anymore. We're so far in the game, but both were really, really dry on land. There is, that went very fast. I think that's a Psyblast. Blast. Dealing three damage to him, actually. Or is it, was it a Psy Blast? I think it went back to my hand, that card. It's so interesting. And now I've got Library activated. I think that's a Boomerang from Frank. That's kind of strange that he would play a Boomerang on the Triskelion because he's kind of doing me a favor with that and he's taking damage. But look at that, he has to discard cards. This is bad news, and now I've got an active library, so that probably means, ooh, power sink. Now he can, he can be in business, because he's got six mana now and two islands. I wonder what he's gonna do with all his land. Oh, I love it. Time Twister again. Oh, I'm loving these Time Twisters. Look at my hand. Was that a time walk in there? I saw lots of good stuff. And Time Twister and Boomerang is also a really nice combination, by the way. You can just Boomerang the big threat and then play your Time Twister. And your opponent has to shuffle it back in the deck. Oh man, you gotta love this. So he's looking at his hand, probably found a land, right? He didn't have a land drop yet. Still got four open from the mana drain earlier in the game. Let's see what he's going to do. Time Twister is such a cool card. I wish I owned a copy. I think it's going really quickly, but I do, I believe he played a Psionic Blast. I'm going to 15 there. He's taking two damage as well, both on 15. And passing turn here. Okay, I do feel kind of lucky that that's all that he can do right now. And he tapped that blue. He doesn't have two blue open anymore. Not sure if that was the good decision here. Because I do believe he's got a Counterspell in hand. And I've got a full hand, man. I'm drawing extra because of the Library of Alexandria. I've got like nine. Look at that. Playing the Time Walk, I, I drew back into it. 
Probably have to discard or play something out. Okay, playing Chaos Orb. And then take an extra turn. This is looking very bad here for Frank. Just to be clear, I activated the Library of Alexandria before drawing the cards. I've got nine in hand playing. Copy Artifact. Wow. Gonna flip on an island. Looks like it's a hit. A little bit of a dodgy flip, to be honest. Island's a goner. What am I gonna do now? Gonna flip on the other island. Okay. Now I'm just being a douche. I'm, I'm sorry, Frank. I'm sorry, man. You should see this as a compliment. Okay, at least there's another island past turn. If he would have kept the double blue open, he could have countered that Chaos Orb. Maybe he doesn't have a counter spell. Maybe I was mistaken. I think I saw one in his hand. I mean, he's still got the mace. He's got two blue open to counter. Ooh, taking care of another land with a strip mine. This is getting dirty. Actually, it already was, but it's getting dirtier, man. And, ooh, Demonic Tutor. Probably going for Ancestral Recall. Oh, looking up the Archaeologist. Okay, I am going for the Spice here. Looking up the Archaeologist, I can actually cast it. Maybe I should, because he can't counter it right now. So I'm going to cast it. Hopefully, he doesn't have a psych uh, Psychic Purge. And then, of course, I want to use the Archaeologist to get the Chaos Orb back. Okay, there's Psychic Purge. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> I mean, if you want to talk about what would, would have been the most competitive play, you know... It's getting the Ancestral Recall. What would have been the coolest play with the Tudor? I think, my opinion, get the Archaeologist. But of course, you get punished for it. Uh, paying 6. Do taking a damage. Going to 13. I need to take a damage here. I feel like I'm forgetting to take the damage. And uh, playing the Tetravis. The 4-4 Fly. But remember, he still has a Mace. Why am I not changing it in Tetravites here during the... Okay, I'm doing it. Okay, okay, okay. A little bit of a sloppy play here. Remember, it is kitchen table, but usually I like to not take anything back and just say, yeah, look, it's an honest mistake. But it looks like I did in this case. And there is a counter spell on my Triskelion playing a Black Lotus. Of course, I should have played the Black Lotus before I cast up my Trike just to have that threat open of a possible counter spell. So. Small little errors here. Look at that. Another Maze of If by Frank. Then a Purge on one of the Tetravite tokens. You Maybe you're wondering why the tokens. That, of course, is because of my Animate Deads. If he kills my Tetravis and I've got an Animate Dead in hand, he's actually helping me. And look at me go with that Library of Alexandria. Remember, it's still active. I've drawn so many cards out of that library. Playing another Mishra's Factory, animating, attacking with everything. is probably going to set back the Mishra and just one of the other tokens. So it's going to take two. It's going to go to 13. So it's going slow, but it's going. I found an opening. And of course, I've got all that card advantage. Ooh, this is pretty good. Can I counter? Oh, countering the Timmy. The Timmy would have been great here, taking care of all those 1-1 one -one tokens. So now he's got three Maze of If. Wow. Three Maze of If. That is tough. All I can do really is just attack with everything. That's exactly what I'm doing. It's going to send back two of the factories and a token. I'm going to take two damage. I'm going to go to 11. So it's going slow, but it's going. Ooh, transmute artifact. Am I going to look up another one? I love this combo, actually. This is so cool. So transmute artifact, two blue to cast antiquities. You can sack an artifact to look for another artifact of the same casting cost. If it has a higher casting cost... Oh, look at this! Oh, ho, ho. Control magic on the Triskelion. And of course, it's killing itself. I have to or else it's going to kill my Tetravites. Oh, man. But look, I think Frank's hand's empty. What I wanted to say, uh, transmute artifact, uh, is you can sacrifice an artifact to tutor for another artifact um, with the same amount of, of mana. And if the casting cost is higher, uh, then you've got to pay the extra cost. Oh, look at this copy artifact on the Tetravis. I think I think it's now pretty much over, right? So I'm taking off all the counters. So one of those is going to be the Tetravites without summoning sickness and one with summoning sickness. So two without summoning sickness, six with summoning sickness. And I guess the Tetravis is your perfect answer to Mazes of If, by the way. What am I going to do? 
playing a soul ring, of course, activating my factories, attacking with everything. So I'm able to deal some damage here. It's going down to six. And there's a Timmy. Yeah, that's it. That's game, right? Even got a plow for that. Ooh. I'm kind of feeling bad this, this game, to be honest. But I guess it's a compliment to Frank's deck that he's kind of forcing me to go all cylinders. And there is an animate that I need to put it under there, not put it in the bin. Pro what am I taking back here? Okay, I'm taking back to Trike to kill him. Yeah, Trike can kill him. Oh man, secretly I just wanted to make more Tetravites. Okay, so this was uh, game number two. Just sorry, man. I mean, I think that double flip on your lands, that was kind of brutal. And, you know, my library got back on. Um, but it's 1-1, one, one, which is good. Because it means we're going to see a game on number three. Game number three. Here we go. 1-1. One, one. Island into Black Lotus. Pretty sweet opener here by Frank. So this is the deciding game. Oh, look at that. Tundra and a Mock Sapphire and a Sage of Latinam turn one. If you remember game one, we had a huge Sage of Latinam battle, right? Which was kind of funny. I do believe I see a Control Magic again. Is he going to... Yeah, he's going to steal it again. <laughs> oh, man. My Sage is keep getting stolen. I want my Sage back. Maybe I've got a Disenchant in hand. No, I've got a time walk. Okay, taking an extra turn. Getting ahead then hopefully on my land drops. If I can find one. Am I missing my land drop here? Looking at my hand. What can I do? I mean, if I don't have a land drop, I'm probably just going to pass, right? I am going to attack for two here. Not sure. Okay, I do have a land drop. That makes sense. I do have that counter spell threat to keep open, which I think is important in these matchups. And there's an attack by the Sage, going to go to 19. And he's passing turn here. Now I'm not sure if I want to animate it again. Remember, my opponent, Frank, is playing with three Psionic Blasts. Okay, and I'm not doing it using... Am I going to flip Chaos Orb on Control Magic? There's no counter spell, and then there's the activation, so I'm going to flip here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sloppy flip, though, but it was a hit at least. No, it wasn't. Okay, it wasn't a hit. Maybe he didn't turn fully. Sloppy, though. So that means the control magic's still there. Playing a balance. It does mean I'm losing a land here. I'm not sure if that's the best trade. Um, he's losing a card as well. Okay, it's not too bad. Throwing away an island here, basic island. And there's a maze and a Timmy. So Frank only has one card in hand. I've got two cards in hand. Not sure if that balance was the right decision, but maybe after that flip, I kind of felt like I wanted to do something against the Sage. Kind of feels like a wrong moment in the game to use such a powerful spell. Passing turn here, and he's also passing turn. He's got the Timmy. He can start pinging me now. That's exactly what he does. Dropping to 17. Finding another factory. So I think I can kind of get a bit more aggressive with the factories. I, I am expecting a Psionic Blast here on at least one of the two. Is this going to be a Psy Blast? Yeah, there's a Psy Blast. So I'm losing one of them. Sending the other one back. So he's on 16 because of the Psionic Blast damage. I'm also on 16. Passing turn here. Dad, we see the desert. So he can do that desert... Particle Sorcerer combination, Counterspell on my Ancestral Recall. Again, I kind of feel well, it was his last card in hand, so it was worth a gamble, I guess. There's another Particle Sorcerer. Okay, this is starting to get problematic. There's a Swords. He's going to ping me, of course. I'm probably playing it on the one that has Summoning Sickness. And I'm on 14 now. Frank's on 17, attacking with both of the factories. And he can actually kill one now. He can just let both of them go through. He can use the desert in combination with the Timmy. And okay, there's something happening with the dice. 
He wasn't 17, right? 16? I don't know. Anyway, uh, pinging and killing. This is quite interesting. I don't really understand what happened there. He could have taken the damage and then killed it with the desert. Not really sure what happened in that specific combat. It looked like Frank had a better option to just take the damage and then use the Timmy and Desert to kill a factory. But maybe I was missing something. So I've played the Archaeologist, so I can now get back my Chaos Orb. And this is, of course, a big problem for Frank here. He needs to find an answer to this. First point of business, get rid of the Archaeologist. Maybe he has a... Uh, a psychic purge in hand, who knows? Am I gonna flip again? I already missed a flip. Then again, I also hit two in the previous game. Passing turn here, interesting. End of turn choosing to flip. And hitting and going for the islands again. Just like I did in game number two. Probably gonna use the archaeologist again, gonna play it out again. There's the counter spell. Okay, so that's gonna buy him some time at least. Has to find that psychic perch. I can use it again, playing it out again. <laughs> Another counter spell. Oh man, ancestral recall. Okay, he's gonna dig through his library, find a mock sapphire. Another maze of it. What is he gonna do here? Does he have a side blast or a psychic perch? I don't think so. Oh, he's got a chaos orb. He's gonna flip on my archaeologist probably. Am I gonna counter this? I do have two blue open with the City of Brass and it mocks. Looks like I'm not though. And he's gonna activate it. Of course he's just gonna flip on the archaeologist. Bam! And that's a hit. Archaeologist gone. Wow, wow, man. I'm really enjoying these games. It's just so much fun to look back at these uh, these uh, games and the matches I played. There's a Tetravus. Which is, I mean, it's good, but it's there's so many mazes. I'm probably going to, you know, take it apart and uh, split it up into tetravites. That's exactly what I'm going to do here. But still, it means I'm, I can only deal one damage, and that's next turn, because now they have summoning sickness. What can I do here? Okay, playing Mana Volt. Tapping the Mana Volt as well. Playing, okay, okay, okay. That makes sense. I'm going to look for an artifact. What am I going to look for? So transmute artifact from antiquities. Is he going to counter it? That would be funny. Oh, he's going to counter mana drain. And remember, I already tapped down the mana vault. Oh man, this is not good. What can I do? Okay, using the mana for my Brain Geyser. Okay, that's actually pretty sweet. Wow, that's some good thinking here. So basically using the Transmute Artifact to kind of lure Frank out of that counter spell and then using it, the Brain Geyser afterwards, using that Mana Vault mana. So that was a pretty good play if I say so myself. And uh, of course he used a desert on one of my tokens. I missed a desert. <laughs> oh, a good play followed up by a bad play, losing a 1-1 flyer to the desert. Oh man, I, I am really liking that combination in Frank's deck of using deserts and mazes because he's kind of forcing me to chop up my Tetravis into little Tetravites, but then he's killing it with the deserts and Timmy's. That's just really, really funny. Going through his deck as well, I think I have an anime dead. Ooh, there's some interesting stuff here. I'm getting going for the Timmy. Because I just want to ping him, probably. I don't see another way out, so I guess I'm going to start pinging in a moment. I mean, he's got three mazes and a desert. It's just insane, the defense. And it looks like I'm tapping six. There is a Triskelion. Boomerang. Oh, he's getting back to Tim. Oh, counterspell. Sweet. Oh, that would have been a sweet play from Frank if that would have worked for him. Really liking that play. And of course, that shows kind of another side of Boomerang. He's probably going to copy the Triskelion, right? Yeah, exactly. So in response, I can kill the Tri can kill itself. Choosing not to. That is, that kind of looks like a bad play, to be honest. 
I feel like what I should have done is kill the Triskelion? Choosing not to, though. Because, I mean, you want to keep the Timmy around, right? You want to keep the Timmy to slowly ping down Frank. I'm on 10 right now. What am I going to do? I mean, I'm pretty stuck here. Going through my hand. These are very interesting games, very interesting decisions to be made. And looking back, I think I could have made some better choices. But it's it's really nice to play with these decks. There's just so many options. And I must say, I'm once again impressed by Boomerang. I mean, I, I do play with it in a few decks, but maybe I should play more regularly. Oh, look at this, a recall. Getting back, I'll give you an archaeologist and an anime dead. And first playing out my, maybe I should first play out the anime dead, to be honest, playing out the archaeologist. Although, if he counters the archaeologist, of course, I can use the anime dead to get it back in. So it kind of made sense that I chose for this order. And if the archaeologist can stick, I can start getting back the chaos orbs again. Man, after watching this, I want to build. Oh, there's a psychic purge. Counter spell. Okay, I'm saving it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Control magic. Oh, that's the worst. That's the worst that can happen. Oh, no. Oh, Frank. Oh, you're such a good player. Kind of luring out that counter spell and then casting the control magic. Oh, luckily for me, he doesn't have too white so I guess maybe what am I doing right now okay okay for a moment there I thought I uh okay I'm pinging my own Tetravis and then bringing it back with an anime debt okay okay for a moment there I thought am I uh am I giving the game to Frank but I'm not that's good at least Frank doesn't have two white so Actually, it would have been better for him to first play the Control Magic and then cast the Purge, choosing the opposite. Let's see. Okay, there is a Sage of Latinam. So Sage works really nice with Tetravis. I can start drawing into some more cards. Oh, 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 look at that. Oh, man. Another Time Twister. Why not? Another Time Twister. Oh, man. I love this. I love this. I love this. I love this. It's so it's such a fun time twister is just such a fun card. It's so much fun to play with that card. It's just so cool. And I know it's not the best decision right now because I'm on five and I know I was on nine, so but it's just so much fun to play. And the chances are really, really big here that Frank's actually gonna find more side blasts and he's just gonna shoot me down, burn me down, or Power of the Mind Me Down, however you want to call it. So first I'm finding a Disenchant, getting my Archaeologist back. But of course the problem now is that there's nothing in the bin to get back with the Archaeologist. So you could even argue that this, this Disenchant wasn't the best, to be honest. Probably should have kept the Disenchant in hand. Okay, playing a Time Walk here. Okay, so this is a way to deal a ton of damage. If he cannot counter this Time Walk... And then the disenchant makes sense. So if I play the disenchant to kind of bait out a possible counterspell from Frank, then I understand the disenchant play. Because you want to make sure that the time walk doesn't get countered. So taking care of the Triskelion that he cannot do another chump block. And that means that I can attack with a pretty sizable army. The question is, am I going to do that? I wonder if I'm going to use... So we're reading the card. I'm trying to make a decision. I don't want to... Yeah, the problem is I don't want to get in side blast range. I want to make sure that I don't take a damage from the mana vault. The problem is in the upkeep, if it's not untapped, you get the damage in the draw step. So it's already on the stack, no matter if you use your sage in your upkeep. So I have to use the four to untap it. Using my strip mine to take care of the other mace. I, I mean, he's on 11, right? I think two... Four, eight, nine damage. It's not enough. Oh, nine damage going to 
two, I believe three, okay. Maybe I was miscalculating. Playing a copy, copying the trike. Okay, that that's it, okay. Oh, he had the psionic blast in hand. Oh, he was so close. He was so, he had it in hand. Man, these were really, really good games, Frank. Thank you for these matches. I had tons and tons of fun. I think both of your decks are really great and well designed and i look forward to play a lot of matches against you in the future especially now that we're slowly opening up here in the netherlands so hopefully we can uh, we can play some more games i really enjoyed jamming with you um probably i've got a few more matches that i played against frank coming onto the channel uh, i also would like to thank you for watching another episode right here on timmy talks the channel where we talk old school magic if you want to support the channel you can always leave a like leave a comment tell me what you think of all the games Please be gentle, because I think there were quite a lot of misplays. But remember, this is just casual, having a drink, having a laugh, having fun, kitchen table magic, okay? So be gentle. <laughs> and uh, what else is there? Oh yeah, you can also become a sponsor of the show. You can become a patron. So if you enjoy these, uh, these uh, movies as much as I do, these videos of, of magic games, uh, you can support me on Patreon, so there's probably uh, an info card appearing right now. Click on there, and then you can find out how you can become a patron of the show. And it's really cool because we've got uh, we've got a Discord, we've got tournaments. I even got a button, so if you want to have have a Timmy Talks button, oh how cool is that? I uh, become a patron, and I can send you one. And also, uh, what else do we have? Of course, your name. Your name will be in the end scroll. Isn't that fantastic? Talking about that, let's take a look at the end scroll and let's take a look at all the fantastic, amazing patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? The light of morning. Way day now she rises. Way day now she rises. Way day now she rises. Her light in the morning. Put him in the long boat until he's sober. Put him in the long boat until he's sober. Ik het dus, ik het dus, somba kazee.